Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to The Legend of Zelda on the NES. Last time we beat Dungeons 2 and 3, we got the magical boomerang, uh, the raft, and we're all ready for Dungeon 4, but before that... Whack the dude in the forehead. We got some stuff to do. So over here is the Lost Woods, one screen up, but on this screen, there is a hidden rupee cave. Right here. <laughs> but the slowdown, it wasn't sure if it was a secret or not. So he gives you exactly 30 rupees, that number is not by chance, because if we come here, there's a lady that you could pay three different amounts, and only one works. 30. But it's a waste of money, because I already know what to do. She thinks you're too cheap if you pay 10, and she's blown away by your richness and is of no help to you if you pay 50. So 30, she gives you the maze solution for the Lost Woods, which leads to the best sword in the game, but we need two more heart containers before we can even hold that sword. So we're not ready yet. But as luck should have it, Dungeon 4 is very nearby, so we'll just dip in there, get the step ladder, and then use that combined with the raft that we have to get some of the overworld heart containers that remain. We will be on our way, very close to basically just barreling to the end of the game. So here it is, this... Oh, I missed the heart. Oh, whatever. Dungeon 4. Oh, it's a dirty gold. It's that computer gold on the default palette of, like, paint and stuff. There's no good silver and gold, you only have... gray? Or the darkest of yellows, which is this, like, puke yellow color. I don't know, when you think gold... You think shiny, right? Not like... If you gave somebody a necklace or a ring that was like this, they'd be like, what are you giving me? What, what sewer were you digging around in? I don't know. But anyway, this place... According to that guide that I was looking at just before starting this, it's actually pretty straightforward. There's not too much bombable walls. And if there are, they're, I think, not really useful. So the only reason to go that way is for the compass, and then it's just follow the doors, basically. And you will find the dungeon item, which is the stepladder, and eventually the boss. So this one's not too bad either, really. I have a kind of specific memory about this game that this dungeon is for some reason bringing to mind. I went to school in elementary school and, well, elementary through high school actually, with two kids, Tom and Danny. They were really close friends and I hung out with them too sometimes. And at one point when Ocarina of Time came out, they were racing against each other to see who could beat the game first, like on their own time in between school and stuff. But they were also playing this game at the same time. I mean, like, I had no life and just played games like crazy, so I had already beaten Ocarina of Time. And I think Tom came over my house. And, uh, he hadn't- he was close to the end of the game, but not really. And I remember I asked him if he wanted to see the ending, because I had a save at Ganon. I remember I felt bad, because he was like, yeah, kind of. But then also he wanted to be legitimate and not see it until he did it on his own. And maybe before Danny beat it, you know? But I showed him the ending anyway, and I kind of felt bad afterwards, like, ah, what am I doing? It's like, the whole point is to experience it for yourself, and I'll be like, oh yeah, look at I have the file. I don't know, I just wonder about that. Anyway, that was the stepladder. It was kind of... yeah. It's good to have that, now we can walk across water and all these screens. It's a finicky thing, though. It's automatic too, so you don't have to do anything. 
But I think Danny came over my house one time and he brought this game. And that's why I think this it comes to mind, because I think he had a file on this dungeon, but then I, at the same time I remember seeing him beat Ganon too. Oh, hello, Manhandler. You're not the boss. That's the thing, they start repeating these bosses in the later dungeons. But that means they're not really much of bosses anyway. Walk into the waterfall. Oh, yeah, that's on up by the mountain. It's just like the uh, woman in the Lost Woods that we just saw. You pay her rupees and she tells you some kind of hint. But we don't really need that. Using a little guide as a guide. <laughs> Not verbatim exactly, just kind of glancing at it before each part here. I don't care. That's what I used to do. I always had a guide. Not always, but for a lot of games, just a reference. And I liked it, man. Like, you know when you can't always play the games? Or if, like, your parents were like, Take a break, you've been playing that all day or something. Then you just go sit in your room and read the guide and eat a snack. Just like with the instruction booklets. So you can get more, because you can never get enough. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm just thinking, you can never get enough. Oh, here's the boss, this is Gleok. He has two heads, but he repeats and gets more heads in a couple other dungeons. Just barrel him. Body all the hits. I hope, anyway. Okay. Luckily, the Triforce is a full heal. That's pretty much that. Didn't get the map, but who cares? Alright, so first on the agenda now, with the raft and step ladder, let's head all the way back to the east and use the raft to find another heart container, and the step ladder right next to it has another heart container. But actually, wait before that, this cheap shop, since it's here, we might as well buy the meat because that's coming up. I don't think it's the next dungeon, but. Yeah, one of these upcoming dungeons has a hungry Gariah that leads to the way forward and you have to give him that meat in order to pass. So at least we have it and I think with that, that cleans up the big overworld purchases. I mean the rest is just kind of potions and uh, bomb expansions mid-dungeon. But yeah, I kind of wonder about Tom and Danny sometimes. So I remember towards the end they kind of had some sketchy things. You, know, you just do that thing where you just wonder where they are and if they're all right, you know? I mean, I haven't heard anything. I've heard other tragic stories of other people that I went to school with. I went to a small school, so I don't know. I guess if something happens, word spreads. It somehow finds its way back. That would be awesome, man. I would love to play Zelda 1 or just watch them play or something. With those guys again. I don't know if that falls into the category of you don't know what you have till it's gone. Well, here we go. This is the raft. Looks like a dungeon, but no, it's not. It's way better. The exact amount of hearts we need for, not the Master Sword, but basically, Magical Sword, I think it's called. But you can always grab more, and we're about to. Not here, or here so much. Right about here. <laughs> the Tommy Boy thing. Yeah, just step ladder over. Nothing to it. Now we gotta go way west. I don't know the fastest way, though. Maybe down this way? I don't know.
So now we actually have to solve the Lost Woods because that leads to the graveyard. We'll grab the sword and also the power bracelet is right over there. Which we probably could have grabbed at some point. I don't know if we need the stepladder or not. I don't know what the map looks like at the moment. Yeah, I don't know. Some stuff just seems like a different lifetime ago. Like it wasn't even me. That's just one of those feelings you could have never predicted as a kid. That you would feel one day. Like you're aware of it, you know? Like, oh yeah, I know. People move on and you're not gonna keep in touch with everybody. I know. But you don't know until you know. Like, you feel it. And it's always something little, too. You never know. You might watch, like, Matilda or some movie randomly and it's gonna remind you of somebody that you saw it with or whatever. And naturally, you're gonna wonder what they're up to. If they're still around or whatever. Life is just kind of a sad existence when you really think about it. It doesn't have to be. Like, it would be awesome to still be, like... You know, have everybody do what they want to do, if they want to become a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. But wouldn't it be cool... ...to kind of be within the same town or subdivision or something? Where it's like, hey man, it's a boring Saturday. I've been working my butt off. Let's go hang out with Tom and Danny again. What are you guys up to? Let's just play Zelda for a Saturday or something. And there are people, actually. I know for a fact there's people that haven't left the hometown I grew up in. Uh, surely one of these is a staircase. I don't really know offhand. I can't picture what... The guide may have said. May have said? That, <laughs> I don't know if that was English that came out of my mouth. Just trial and error, right? Whatever. Ah, it's just junk. Okay, so the thing is north. West, south, and then west once more. And you get the classic chime to know you did it right. All these Lionels, man. Makes me want to play Breath of the Wild a little bit. I've been thinking about that, just, I don't know, every now and then I think of the very opening of Breath of the Wild, where you just grab some sticks, pick up some beetles, that really was a feel-good thing, but it's this grave. Best sword in the game. I don't know exact damage counts, like how much better, but it's good. And the graveyard, I think, is pretty much useless on the first quest beyond this. There might be a warp in the top left, but... Now this is Dungeon 6. We haven't done five yet. And Dungeon 6 is insane. So we're gonna skip it. There's also a potion shop actually right here. But we'll deal with that when we actually do the dungeon. Here we go, this is the power bracelet. It is the very top right one. Just randomly. So now we can push rocks on the overworld, like the ones over here, which lead to... This is a warp. A fast way of getting around the overworld map, since it does take quite a bit of time. I don't know which one is pushable, though. I haven't done this, I actually tried recording this part already and I went into Dungeon 6 and yeah, it's rough, dude. I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> Let's take any road. The guide was saying to go to the right one. 
Yeah, and now we're way in the north, uh, east, which is where Dungeon 5 is. Okay, here we go. This is the screen. So you just go up four times. I think maybe the waterfall lady says that. I think this game is definitely a barrier for people. It's like stuff like this where you're like, what? Here we go, level five, the nice NES green. Oh, I love this green. This is Pole's voice, they're weak to bow and arrow. Or... Save your money and just get a stopwatch if you can. I mean, you have no control over that, that's random. So yeah, this one I don't know as much, but it looked like there was a lot of bombable stuff. Not yet. So yeah, we gotta keep the bomb counts in mind. Dig Dogger hates certain kind of sound. Yes, the dungeon item is the whistle, the warp whistle from Mario 3, which is actually the whistle from this game. So yeah, this one might be the most convoluted one so far, but I guess it's about time, because they've been kind of a cakewalk up until now. But yeah, from what I know about the sixth one, it definitely gets pretty brutal. this game slows down like this part of the music I remember trying to learn this on bass because this is what Joppas plays in Majora's Mask when he's practicing his bass I remember when I was a kid I was like oh yeah so cool so stupid but yeah I'm terrible at that like this part coming up again even if you slow it down I still just hear doo -doo 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 -doo. Like, I, don't, I couldn't tell you what the notes are. So yeah, I could play the song on bass up to that point. And I just stopped trying to learn it. And I know it's just a scale, too. That's the thing. I never learned scales or anything. Which is, like, <laughs> the number one thing you're supposed to do. Another kind of school regret, I guess. Just wishing I did the music thing. I remember my dad, I really wanted a drum set one time, and he was like, we're not having all that noise. Even in the basement, it would be too loud. And that was pretty much the end of that. I was like, all right, I guess music isn't happening. <laughs> just here I got lost up in what I was saying I think I just bombed the same walls yeah I've watched Nintendo Capri Sun especially play this game in all kinds of various forms he did a three heart run he did a second quest run way back. That's one of his very first Let's Plays, I think. And then he's done so many randomizers by themselves and combined with the original Metroid. And even after watching all that stuff... Like, I remember, like, he would pull up the map to try to, especially with a randomizer, to be like, okay, what dungeon is this? It's like, how do you even know? <laughs> Based off of the map. But Metroid is the same way. It's just one of those things, if you were playing games in the 80s, early 90s and stuff, like, it's just, you learned them. But 
but I could definitely see it. Like, a couple more playthroughs through this game, and you would start to get it just like you do with A Link to the Past. Like, I'm starting to kind of understand the overworld, which before I was like, where is anything? What does any of this mean? Surely. I don't know, this just screams that one of these is pushable, but maybe not. Ah, crap! I don't have the whistle! This is the boss! Believe it or not, that was the boss just now. Alright, well somehow we have to find our way... This is probably just a dead end. Although that would be cool if they force you to go through the boss room to get to the item. No, I'm running out of bombs. Okay, well we gotta find the staircase that leads to the item and then come all the way back here. Still don't have the map, that's not helping things. Because at least then you could see if there's a room adjacent to where you are and bomb accordingly. Although that doesn't even help because I've seen... Sometimes you bomb into a black space on the map. And I was like, how does that make sense? There's not supposed to be a room there. Hey, uh, when's Horizon, uh, the second one coming out? I still have yet to play the first one. But my PS4 has been acting weird. I get the blue screen a lot. It started happening a lot with Subnautica, but it's happening with other things too. And so like, part of me is just like, alright, let's just get a PlayStation 5 if we can ever find one. There's the map. That's right, this is that room where I was just kind of sitting. I like the shape though, it's like a... Like a Charmander. Crap, I'm out of bombs! Oh man, just enough. Thank God some of the enemies respawn in this place. I didn't have to go back too far to get bomb drops. Sure enough, this guy's dancing with bombs. Alright, well, all this is new, so that means we're headed somewhere, right? Well, this must be the one that's called the Dragon, then. If it's like a little dragon head shaped dungeon. I don't know. What was I saying before all that bomb chaos? Thank you, that was nice. Yeah, this stuff can be a little bit tedious sometimes. Cause you just don't know when they're gonna quick pivot. I don't know, do you think this song would be better without the melodic part? Like the real twinkly part, if it was just the bass notes? I think it would be less ear piercing. We probably have to do something there, but. Yeah, I guess maybe that is one thing to say, since it really is just a palette swap. Like, the best you got is, oh yeah, the room with the one row of water. Or with this particular enemy in it, like, that's how you have to remember these rooms. I bet you'd like to have more bombs, dude! Where were you, like, five minutes ago? 
12 is our new maximum. That was worth it. I'm glad I decided to check there. Well, I probably have to come back here anyway to go all the way to where the boss is. So yeah, defeat all enemies, push the block. Yeah, and then I'll reveal the staircase. Gotcha. But yeah, the more graphically impressive games, like, you can kind of better gauge, better remember a room and a strategy that you need. Oh, sweet, that does work. I don't know, I think it's good to go back, though. It makes you appreciate the little changes that they did make. Like, even Zelda 2, man. There's some stuff to appreciate there, definitely. Like, really, that was... I remember they were saying they were looking at that really heavily for Ocarina of Time. Like, that was the inspiration to go back to something like that. But to make it better or whatever. There we go. Let's head back to the boss now. There we go, now he's tiny size, just smack him in the forehead or the eyeball, whatever he is. Quit moving around. Jeez. Well, there we go, man, we're getting life like crazy now. Sheesh. That little bomb run around was something. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. Sorry for kind of messing it up, but yeah. See you next time. Take care.